All right. So we are recording, and uh, this is the second uh, meeting for Chaos Asia in the month of October. We have these biweekly meetings every other Thursday at eight a.m. IST, and uh, <clears throat> the previous iteration of this meeting was hosted by uh, Zhao, who's not here with us today because she's flying back from uh, Open Source Summit Japan. Um. So to get started with the meeting, um, I'm just going to share my screen because uh, we have a couple of agenda items to get through today. Um, after which, um, if there are any, um, you know, discussion points that you want uh, to bring up in terms of like queries or concerns or suggestions, you can do that uh, towards the end uh, in the open discussion forum. Uh, so sharing my screen right now. All right, so this is the agenda doc for today. Um, firstly, uh, I don't know if anyone from the uh, outreach focus group has joined. Uh, so in Chaos Asia, we uh, we recently uh, sort of started the outreach focus group that, uh, you know, evangelizes about our, um, you know, collaborations and uh, speaking opportunities on uh, LinkedIn and on Twitter. Uh, so... Uh, it comprises currently of uh, Zhao and uh, Leon. Uh, I don't see both of them here. Uh, so I am uh, going to put forth this question on the um, uh, Slack channel if we want to uh, talk about our uh, birds of feather or unconference session at CostCon, uh, which we're participating in according to Zhao in, uh, for the last meeting notes. So... Um, if we want to do that, we'll need some sort of artwork and everything ready. Um, and I don't know what the topic has been, uh, you know, decided upon. So this is one of the questions I'm going to put forth um, to them. And if you're interested in joining the Outreach Focus Group, we also have a channel dedicated to that so that you can help out with uh, the outreach. That is uh, chaos, hashtag chaos Asia or uh, dash social. Um, I can actually show it to you if you see it here. Um, yeah, so if you see it here, this is the uh, um, outreach social group uh, on Slack. So <clears throat> you can join this if you want to uh, help out with this. So we've just started posting uh, more diligently, but as we get more involved, uh, this is something that will come into focus. So yeah, that is uh, the first update for today. I'm going to pause you and see if you have any questions. Okay, so since there are no questions, I'm going to um, move to the next one. Uh, the second thing is, uh, we also have a disability um, uh, oriented, so a focus group oriented towards um, helping people with disabilities uh, from the Asian region to uh, get involved in open source. Um, and uh, Sandeep, uh, who is again not here, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, leading that effort. Um, and um, on the channel, for Chaos Asia, Elizabeth recently uh, uh, actually posted about partnering with uh, Catherine from CNCF, who's been doing some really great work in this space uh, by bringing the deaf and hard of hearing and a bunch of other uh, disabled folks um, into the CNCF ecosystem. So uh, that's something that we are working towards. And... Uh, this uh num focus um uh in in that in that vein itself this was uh, one of the opportunities that came through uh wherein num focus has a dei handbook and they wanted contributors to it so if this is something of interest and if you know people who are in the um you know uh, who are disabled and want to get involved uh please do let them know about uh, these opportunities we would love to help them participate in the wider open source ecosystem. So yeah, that's the second update. I'll pause here for a bit and see if you'll have any questions. Uh, 
the second point about num focus uh, dei handbook and uh, the contributors like uh, contributors in what sense they require so um i think just a second let me just open this up uh this is basically uh it's a medium article um and uh, <clears throat> they are i mean you will have to read through it because i haven't either so uh i think from the gist of, uh, from what i'm reading right now it's uh, basically to um, create the handbook in uh, that will be used uh, <clears throat> by uh, the num focus folks and um, it will basically be contribution to that handbook uh, from your perspective. Like it might not necessarily be required to uh, be a disabled person for this, but uh, this is more from the perspective of contributing to a handbook that will reflect the diversity um, uh, perspectives that you bring to the table. So yeah, so basically you can, if you want to partner, if you want to, um, you want, you, you want to contribute individually, um that's that's a great thing so it's it's the all the requirements are written here uh you can go through the uh article and see if that's something that you're interested in helping uh both you and shinsan by the way uh when i mean you it's both of you it's not just uh uh manu any other questions before we move ahead All right. So um, next is collaboration opportunities. Um, this, uh, again, is related to the very first one. Um, Zhao will actually have more insights about what we are uh, talking about. Since I don't have the final uh, topic we are talking about right now, uh, since I was also um, out of office uh, till the last week. And we haven't had time to catch up. But... Uh, <clears throat> She is trying to organize an unconference or a birds of feather session at Coscon. Um, and that's actually this weekend. So um I don't know what's the final thing, but uh we can definitely ask on the thread, um, in the same thread that we are gonna ask her and Leon about the evangelizing efforts if necessary. So um I don't have much updates on this, I'm sorry, but uh yeah, if anybody has any um any other collaboration opportunities in terms of like conferences we must speak at, conferences we must partner with as a community uh partner or something like that, please, please do let us know on the tracking issue below. Uh, this would really help us in uh you know uh keeping that in our radar for the next year because this year, of course, it's almost at the end we we just have two months left so i don't think we can partner with any right now but for the next year we can keep them on our radar and uh, you know figure out how to uh, logistically align our efforts with uh, these respective conferences yes so um yeah so i'm gonna pause there and see if you all have any questions Okay, uh, I see that Manul has um, asked what is Birds of Feather or Unconference uh, in the chat. So Birds of Feather or Unconference is basically uh, you have a particular topic and you uh, have, uh, so it's, 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 it's not a speech or a session or a presentation. Typically at a conference, you would expect uh, someone to be standing on a stage and looking at a presentation or demoing a technology, right? It's not that. Uh, what we are uh, thinking of when we think of birds of feather or unconference is that uh, you have a particular topic. In this case, the uh, <clears throat> let's, let's assume that this is related to... Um, uh, ISO standardization because that is one thing I'm familiar with and it has been done previously. So assume the uh, topic is ISO standardization. So you will try to gather uh, var varied perspectives on that particular topic by forming groups of people um, based on specific areas. So 
you could have like groups of maintainers you could have groups of um you know open source contributors you could have groups of uh, people working in open source program offices uh, so people who generally have an interest in this topic um will be sort of coming into that session and there will of course be a few folks at the helm who are organizing the session like in this case it will be Zhao um and they will be setting the tone on what is uh, what are our end goals uh, now in in terms of ISO standardization when um Georg and uh, folks did it at uh, OSS Vienna um not ISO standardization actually it was another one so they had a list of uh, agenda items that they wanted uh, feedback on and they wanted more uh, inputs on. So they they drew up that uh, item uh, item list and they went through that item list and gathered those different perspectives. So um, think of it like a, a group discussion sort of a thing, but uh, in a more organized manner. You You have specific topics to target when you're thinking of a BOF or an unconference. You do not like randomly discuss anything that comes to mind. Just very specific topics and very, um, and it is targeted towards a larger overarching topic. Did that clarify your question? Uh, did that clarify the doubt that you had? Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> So that is regarding the birds of feather unconference session. Uh, does anybody else have any other doubts? Okay. Uh, next up, um, these are a few reminders. Uh, first up, uh, uh, we have a chaos con that is adjacent to first M coming up. Uh, and uh, uh, all of these are like co-located in, um, I wouldn't say co-located in like the literal sense, but they occur one after the other in the same area. Uh, uh, it's in Brussels next year. So the CFPs are open for first term. So if anybody wants to submit um, talks for, for first term or something, uh, that that is a thing right now and you all can submit it. Um, and uh, travel funding, again, from the Chaos Asia side of things, I cannot guarantee uh, uh, travel funding, but the Chaos Project in general does offer travel funding uh, for uh, project. Like if you're talking about a project related to, a uh, sub-project related to Chaos, so if you want to submit something to, uh, say, a first stem or a, ChaosCon, uh, please consider doing so. Uh, first time is linked here and ChaosCon, as soon as the CFP opens, I will let you know. Uh, similarly, um, first backstage is also, uh, you know, opening uh, for CFPs. Um, it's, it's, a it's a virtual and uh, uh, an in-person event, so it's a hybrid one. So um, this happens in Berlin. Um, and if you're interested in sort of uh, talking about uh, chaos or any of the work that we do here, um, please feel free to submit. Uh, this is more community management and open source health and community health oriented conference. So it's a perfect area for us to evangelize. And if anyone's interested in talking about uh, chaos Asia, uh, I'm happy to help y'all uh, co-submit something. Uh, because I don't want to be the only person going to conferences and speaking about us uh, and evangelizing about us. So if there's anyone interested in co-submitting with another member of the group, happy to help you all, um, you know, do that. Uh, you all can get in touch with me and uh, let me know. So that, uh, I mean, it's it's virtual. So uh, if, if you're not even in person, you just have to be, available during that particular time um, and uh, give the presentation. I've done that this year. So if there is an opportunity for that, and if you all would like to take it, uh, please, please do let me know. And the last one is scale, which is, uh, again, it's overlapping with uh, uh, 
uh, backstage at this point uh, again in person so uh, this happens in US uh, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend if you're not traveling to the US to go here uh, because there are visas and other things to be taken into consideration uh, so if you are there in the US at around this time this is a good uh, conference to CFP too um, otherwise you know there are other events coming up um, next year which we will be talk talking about in the Asian region as well um, so yeah those are the updates and reminders and all the agenda items I had so I'm going to pause uh, for, I mean, pause here indefinitely and see if you all have any questions um, or any open discussion items to bring up. Uh, no questions then, uh, because uh, there are, uh, there's, we've got, I think, how much time do we have? We have around 28-ish minutes to talk. So if there are any questions, now's a good chance to ask, um, because I don't know how many of you all know about the things that we do. Uh, I know, I mean, I know Leon and Manuel do, but uh, Shinzan, if you want uh, any assistance, um or anything please do let us know because uh, this is a good time to talk in person uh slack might not be as intuitive uh when you uh have conversations over it so yeah okay thank you so yeah uh i have a question about uh website community website uh, recently i asked uh to ask japanese translation and uh, yeah uh, it was added but i think it's not um, sorry, uh, it's a little difficult to understand uh, some parts. So now I'm asking how, uh, if I, we can edit a translation, but uh, I'm sure if it's okay, how we can we proceed this translation edition, ed editing? Do you that's have any idea? Yes, that's a very good question. And um, as a person who works on uh, localization efforts and translation efforts for another project, I understand what you're saying. It is uh, not accurately representative of the language that you speak in. The translation is not exactly like how you would talk to a normal person about a particular project. Yeah. So in that case, what I would recommend is... Um, um, opening up this as a uh, read first on the uh, website working group and uh, politely saying that, uh, you know, um, I actually did go through the translation, but there is not a one-to-one -one mapping in, uh, it's hard to understand as a native Japanese speaker what is being written and it's it sounds very machine translated. Is there a way for Japanese um, native folks to could contribute to this. That is a very good starting point to start that, that topic. They will guide you further whether you know you need to open up issues against the website repository or you need to follow some other mechanism because uh, in my uh, experience what uh, what is how the translations are sort of switched on are basically through uh, an API that directly connects to Google Translate and that's how you know, you're finding it difficult to read, right? So um, I would recommend going to the website working group, uh, which you're already familiar with, and saying that I did go through the translated pages, but uh, they seem to be uh, a direct machine translation. Is there any way for me to contribute it to make it more human uh, friendly in terms of readability? That's a good, that's a good way to start up a conversation again. And uh, if you uh, if you'd like me to help you out with that i'm ha absolutely happy to do so uh, yeah thank you very much yeah uh, any okay, other questions you.
Um, not for now, for me. Okay, not a problem. Um, any other questions from any other people on here? If there are no questions, I'm happy to give you back um how much ever time is left, uh twenty four ish minutes of your uh life uh of this hour back. So, uh thank you everyone uh for joining in today, and uh, I hope uh <clears throat> you have a great rest of the day, and I'll uh probably see you uh next time around uh because it'll be Zhao hosting um if possible. Uh, because I will be in uh, the US time zone at that point in time. I think even Sandeep is going to be in the US time zone at that point in time. So I will not be there. Uh, it will be very late in the night for me. But I will see if Zhao can do uh, an informal hosting just like she did last time. So that uh, y'all can convene and discuss um, the topics uh, that y'all need to discuss uh, without me being there. Yeah. So thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali, Sandeep. Thank you so much.